Woods. This is uh, Dr. James Canton. We're here in Mill Valley, California, beautiful Mill Valley. And um, I'm uh, Gerd Leonhardt. We're both futurists. And we're having a bunch of short conversations today about what we do and why we do it and why it's meaningful or maybe not. But uh, so the first question we're going to talk about is what do we actually do? Many uh, people don't know what a futurist is or they're thinking of, you know, Ray Kurzweil uh, as the as the em imminent futurist. But what are we doing? So what, well, how do you describe your job? Well, I do forecasts. Uh, I look at trends. I use both uh, analytic models and uh, empirical models. And I look at data, but I also talk to people who are creating the future, oftentimes uh, the outliers. And I spend a lot of time uh, in the marketplace looking at what's next and then trying to figure out what are the implications. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I also look at things like uh, uh, who are on the periphery of what we're doing. They're involved in the environment or they're involved in some kind of emerging technology, something disruptive that might lead me to better understand mm -hmm. change. Yeah, I, I use this term a lot, uh, if I can, for, the, for my clients to, to look beyond the obvious. You know, because one of their biggest problems that their clients are having is that they're so busy chasing what they do today that they, uh, they have no time to look beyond the obvious. So I was looking at next month revenues, or especially big companies, right? and this is a death wish. Because as you can see, for example, Nokia, you know, it was quite obvious that the touchscreen was coming, right? but it was beyond their level of obvious. Right. So my mission is to bring that, I think, forward. So I, I'm looking at three to five years to bring it forward to them. Yeah, I think that that's a, I share that uh, perception. Uh, not all futures are the same. Right. Uh, there are some very thoughtful uh, futures that you wouldn't want to speak to your group because they'll put you to sleep. Uh, they're very smart but very boring. I think uh, the thing that you and I have in common is uh, uh, the maybe the, a bit of the entertainment factor uh, as well as uh, that we have one big job, which is to look over the horizon for our clients and say, this is what we think is coming. Your focus, as you said, well, on the next quarter or maybe even the next year, we can tell you how to prepare, how to invest, what kind of talent you need to get ready for that next you know, impact on, on, on green and sustainability or what's coming in terms of the challenges to your ecosystem and competition. I, I think that's one thing that futurists should do, which is to think about what's coming next. You know, there's a Chinese saying that, uh, I think it's Chinese, that says, uh, if you want to know about the future, ask your children. I think because children have this horizon of going and having imagination. And, and it's so hard to keep imagination when, when you're just always stuck to the bottom line. Uh, so to bring this imagination back to them and say, you know, you have to be able to uh, uh, use the sort of play factor, you know, and think about, okay, my company today, for example, in the car business, you know, in five years, cars are going to be about transportation. They're not going to be about status symbols, you know, some of them, but not most of them not, right? So what is beyond that obvious? It's very hard to do when you're stuck in the current to look at what's outside of your current world. Right? Kids can do that. Absolutely. In fact, I have a, uh, a motto that says uh, success is a barrier to seeing the future. Yeah. Current success, because you think this is the way it's going to be. <laughs> there is no steady state. Uh, we collaborated together on a project, a speaking project for uh, Volkswagen, of course. Mm -hmm. I was in the States and you were meeting with a client and presenting. Uh, what did you learn from that that might, another client might help us understand about how the courage of that client even to ask us to think about the future with them? Well, I think the challenge is clearly for us is, you know, that there's cultural issues about how people do things and why they, for example, in Europe, we're risk adverse and Americans are obsessed with risk and, and the opportunities. You know, they're pioneers and they're cowboys in many ways, in a positive sense, right? In Europe, we don't do that. So I think it's very hard uh, and, a, and a challenge for us to be internationally equally uh, versatile. You know, when you go to Japan or to go to Asia or South America, everybody has a different culture of innovation. But one thing that's in common that I found a lot is this, uh, you know, people don't change unless you give them either pain or love. You know, so they fall in love with an idea, like Bezos fall in love with a Kindle, and there was no indication that it was going to be fruitful. And Nokia has the pain, you know, of yeah. being now utterly, you know, basically vanishing, basically. And, and, and out of that pain, now they're changing too. And so pain and love is a sort of good, uh, no, a good I, recipe. I, I like that, but I have to, uh, in, in defense of uh, U.S. companies, uh, they don't always get it right. Yeah. And there's the same kind of 
problems they have with not seeing the future. I mean, I, that's really the business we're in, is helping our clients see the future. You think about it, Microsoft, uh, they stayed too long with their model, uh, their paradigm is based on the desktop. Well, the internet was emerging, they didn't quite see that. Yeah. Uh, you have more agile companies like Apple. I started at Apple, I was on the original Mac team, and much of what I learned, I learned from Steve Jobs, tearing paper up and exploding because we just didn't understand how to be more uh, what I call future ready. So, you know, American companies, some get it, uh, many, quite frankly, don't get it, and they're not around today. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it works both ways, you know. So I, I, I think there's really value in how people do stuff in Europe as well as South America, right? There's all different values. But the bottom line is, you know, seeing the future as you are in the present is right. sort of a, you have to be not schizophrenic, but you have to be dualistic. You, know? you have to be able to see what's in five years, which may, in most cases, have nothing to do with what you're doing today. Very much so. And, and, and that's, that's, that's quite a challenge, you know, for us, of course. That's our daily mission. That's our daily mission. And, and, and in all fairness, that's why companies hire us, uh, because we're obsessed with, uh, for them, we're kind of the pathfinders. Yeah.